and welcome back to another video. If you watched my previous video of us in Cairns, you would know we recently spent time there. So I thought I would just do a video of some backpacker tips that will help you if you do decide to go to Cairns and what to expect and things like that. But before you watch the video, I'm going to save you some money on accommodation all across the world, whether it's hostels, hotels, guest houses, whatever it is, I can save you some money on accommodation. All you need to do is just click on the link below, it's for booking.com. Every time you book something, click on the link below and it will save yourself some money. So if you're traveling, it's a perfect way just to save some more money so that you can spend on other cool things like doing tours and stuff like that. So what should you expect when you arrive in Cairns? You should expect hot, sticky, humid weather, day and night. Cairns is very, very far north and it's very typical. It's surrounded by rainforests and lots of creeper crawlies. When I was there, the weather didn't drop below 32, 32 degrees, and even at night time, it was still stupidly, stupidly hot. You would have to have aircon in your room just to cool down the tiniest bit. But during the day, if you think that you can just go down to the beach and just jump in the sea, do not do that. Just don't do that. If you jump in the water, I can almost guarantee you certain death. Cairns is surrounded by wildlife, you can get creepy coolies, but in the water specifically it's surrounded by big, huge, fat, hungry crocs, like they're everywhere. If you talk to any local, they'll say do not go in the water. If you do see any people in the water, they are backpackers who have no common sense and basically want to die. So do not swim in the waters. Cairns itself doesn't actually have a beach whatsoever. If you go a bit further up north to Port Douglas, you can get a bus there. They do tours up to Port Douglas basically daily. There's some beautiful white beaches there. But again, do not swim in the sea there because there's jellyfish, there's crocs, and basically just do not risk it whatsoever. Instead of going to the beach, you can go to the lagoon, which, pe uh, which Cairns have, which is really, really cool. It's right along the Esplanade, so that's where all the shops are and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's open day and night. It's free to use. It gives it's pretty busy at the weekends, but during the day it's really, really, it's quite empty to be honest with you. There's some nice barbecue spots where you can uh, bring some food, you can cook a barbecue along the lagoon front bit and it's really, really nice. So just go there, cool off, but do not go in the sea. If you do, you will probably get eaten. There's not a lot of people that survive croc attacks. You normally die, so unless you want to die, then do it, but if you don't, don't do it. Where do you stay in Cairns? Cairns is a very competitive, it's like a holiday resort town place and there's plenty of places to stay for a relatively good price. The main resort which a lot of backpackers stay in is called Gilligan's. It's a bit out of the way, it's not near the lagoon, it's not near the Esplanade, it's a bit closer to the main shop area. Um, from what I've heard it's very good, it's very nice but of course you do pay the price for it. It does have a nightclub right below it so if you are a, a party goer and you want to stay somewhere a lot of people go like that, definitely recommend Gilligan's for that. We didn't stay there ourselves, we stayed so we're a bit more quiet, a bit closer to Lagoon. We played, we stayed in a place called uh, Jazz Cairns and Waterfront Backpackers. I would recommend one of them, and the one I would recommend is Jazz Cairns. It's a lot more chilled. It's very clean. It's very hygienic. They have daily people coming to clean the rooms, which is very good. The kitchen is amazing. It's fully equipped, and if you are a traveller, you would know having a fully equipped kitchen is like heaven. You've got pots, you've got pans, you've got cutlery, you don't have to pay for it, which is amazing. So I definitely recommend Jazz Cairns. I will put the description link below. It's a bit quieter, it's got a good price to it, and I'd highly, highly recommend going there if you are thinking of staying in Cairns. But like I said, anywhere in Cairns you can stay. It's relatively good price. You'll pay roughly about $55 a night for a dorm room. We stayed in a private room the whole time and we paid $280 for two of us for seven nights in Jazz Cairns, which is really, really good. It's only $140 each for a week, which is amazing. So I highly recommend that. But again, go on booking.com, click the link below and you'll see loads and loads and hundreds of places to stay which are relatively good price. What is there to do in Cairns? To be honest with you, in Cairns itself, there's not a lot to do. It's a bit boring, it's a lovely place but it is a bit boring. It's got the lagoon and it's got the shopping centre. I lost count of how many times we went round the shopping centre just looking at the same shops, doing the same things. There's not a lot to do in Cairns but I am so, so sorry about that. A fire alarm went off and we had to evacuate the building. Luckily, it was a false alarm, but when you stay in hostels, always, always remember, if you set off a fire alarm in Australia, you have to pay for the fire engine to get out here. And it's not cheap. It's about $2,500. 
so just don't set up the fire alarm. But anyway, as I was saying, there's not huge amounts of doing cans, it's just more tours. Obviously, you've got Daintree Rainforest, you've got Miller Miller Waterfalls, you've got Beautiful Lace, and of course, it's the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. So, if you are thinking of doing that, there's loads and loads of tours to do. They are quite expensive, so I would advise before you get to Cairns, I would advise maybe booking some in advance. There's a good website called Backpacker World Travel where you can book tours in advance, obviously, tours all the way down to the east coast as well, all along the east coast area towards Sydney Way. But again, just do your research beforehand. You can save heat and heaps of money if you do book it in advance when you are there if you're walking around there are tons and tons and tons of people that will stop you it's so annoying eventually I got so bored and annoyed they would either talk to us and we would just ignore them or I'd just say we're leaving tomorrow even though we're there for another week and I just really hope they didn't see us again they will offer you the best tour in town the best price in town all of them say exactly the same thing they'll ask you where you're from they'll say oh loads of people from there here wonder what it is no one's from there we're from Southampton we didn't meet one person from Southampton and the amount of people that said Oh, we've met loads of people from Southampton here. No, you haven't. You're a liar. They're just trying to get your business. So do not go with the first person that stops you. There are loads and loads of them around. Um, they will carry on stopping you if you look like a tourist. So don't look like a tourist. Ditch the mat. Ditch the backpack. Um, if you have any leaflets in hand, whack them in your pocket. Um, and just carry on talking to who, whoever you're with when you walk past them. And they won't stop you. But to regards of what they're to do in Cairns, Heaps and heaps of tours, scuba diving, skydiving, uh, rain, uh, rainforest walks, there's loads and loads to do, a bit outside loads of tours, so look that up as well. Um, if you do book more than one at a go, you will save yourself a bit of money, so I definitely recommend doing that as well, um, so that will save yourself some more money there. But hopefully this video has helped you out a little bit, and if you are thinking of going to Cairns, that is sort of opened your eyes a bit of what to expect and stuff like that. It isn't what I thought it would be. Daisy thought there'd be loads of beaches and I actually said to her, no, in Cairns there's no beaches and I was right. So I proved her wrong on that. There's no beaches. It's hot, hot weather. Expect to get hot weather. Um, whatever time of year you go, we went in the monsoon season. I mean, when it rains, if anything, it's still so, so hot. It doesn't cool you down. It just makes you wet, but then you dry off within five to 10 minutes. It's so hot whack sun cream on. I think it's called splish splash splosh or something like that you do with your sun cream because just how hot the weather is you need to whack loads on and keep it up to date otherwise you will burn. You get a nice tan out there but I hope this has helped out a lot. Uh, if you do want to save money on travel don't forget also just to hit that link in the description below that will save you money on booking.com wherever you are in the world hostels hotels anything that will save you money so make sure you use that link um, and also when you're traveling that helps a lot if you did like this video share it with your friends drop it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to follow more and more uh, regular travel content i will be doing videos everywhere i go so we are currently in brisbane i'll do a cinematic nice video of Brisbane and I'll do a more of a formal video like this as well so if you like that sort of stuff give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and I hope you liked it I'll see you soon until next time bye Daisy mm -hmm. what are you doing